Hello and welcome to this edition of Intelligent Video Today. I'm your host, Steve Von Hart. Joining us on today's episode, Jonathan Benheim, VP of Product Management over at Sunday Sky. Welcome, Jonathan. Thank you, Stephen, for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and to looking forward to the conversation. Well, tell us a little bit about Sunday Sky. Uh, uh, walk us through the evolution of the company. You guys started in the area of automated video production, but the company's position has evolved in a little bit in the past couple of years. Uh, walk us through that if you could. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there is a little bit of history to the company and evolution, as you pointed out. Um, company was initially founded in 2007, and its core goal was to really create the idea of modular video or the idea that content can be updated easily and frequently, kind of taking inspiration, I would say, from the architecture of website, uh, essentially, right? Um, that was really the, the push. And up until about 2020, 2021, the model was kind of service-based where the technology was focused on real-time rendering and the ability to have that modular content but it was kind of back-end based, uh, back based uh, technology. And the way it was presented to users was more through, I guess you could call it an agency model, where Sunday Sky provided creative services as an agency to build video experiences based off this technology, uh, but very much a full service uh, business model, uh, recognizing a need that um, self-service, I would say, uh, was becoming more and more prevalent and that organizations were also looking for, I would say, more efficient and more in-house ways of scaling video. Uh, the company actually evolved into a cloud-based video editing uh, software or interface that allows users to create video for themselves, utilizing the same technology, real-time rendering, modular approach to video, but then also adding in a lot of capabilities and a user interface uh, which is geared to making video creation you know, efficient, affordable, and overall just uh, scalable. And that's where we sit today. Now, when we've talked in the past, you've really beaten the drum around the idea that uh, Sunday Sky can democratize the video content creation process. Uh, uh, tell me why that's the case. Yeah, absolutely. So from our perspective, there are kind of two core aspects to like democratizing video, if we were to say that. And the first one, and the, I think the one that a lot of people would resonate with, is just reducing the barrier to entry in terms of skill set to creating a video. Um, our interface, the concepts that we utilize in order to create a video uh, are really focused around empowering any current professional who you know, may view themselves as a subject matter expertise, a expert around some kind of content and being able to translate that into a video format but without having to have the in-depth knowledge of either software associated with the industry today, like the Adobe Suite, but also just the ins and outs of uh, practices and design and composition understanding that's necessary to do that. So our philosophy is really around allowing non-video oriented users to actually focus on the content decisions that they already know how to make, what they're an expert in, in terms of subject matter, and our platform will help with the decisions in terms of video uh, that they don't know how to make. Now, the other aspect I'd mentioned too is that we want our platform and we drive our platform to focus on scale, right? It's not enough just to democratize the creation aspect for the individual, but it has to be uh, accessible to the business organization. Um, and that really makes means that it has to make sense from a cost versus value sense, right? So um, our capabilities are also really fo uh, focused around driving efficiency in creation, which is one of the key drivers for scale. And we can talk about how some of our core creative concepts, tools, use of AI drive for, towards that, but also in creating and allowing for automation of existing segmentation and personalization that a business uh, may be already uh, utilizing and also ease of distribution. Uh, and then, of course, focusing on measurement so that then businesses can actually uh, prove out value. So those two kind of areas together around, uh, one, reducing the barrier to entry in terms of users and skill sets and making sure that the platform is also driving scale on an organizational level combined together, uh, allow us to kind of feel that we're giving all organizations the power of video and hence democratizing video. 
Now, of course, on Intelligent Video today, we always talk about the integration of AI into video production platforms like yours. And you've identified uh, three different ways that AI can really impact the video creation process. The first one of those you were telling me about is the co-pilot experience. So what does that look like? Yeah, so a co-pilot experience is not too dissimilar from what you'd expect from maybe a chat GPT experience today, um, where what we're driving for is for a user to feel like they're having a conversation with a subject matter expert or consultant who, similar to why you would hire a consultant, is trying to help you achieve your goals, specifically for us, your goals in terms of video, right? Uh, the experience with Copilot has been designed that um, Copilot gently prods a user to really think about what they're trying to accomplish with their video in terms of asking questions around goals, audience, tone, content um, in these kind of open-ended questions, as I as I'd mentioned. Once Copilot, um, through a, a chat interface, um, kind of feels like it's gathered enough information, then it will provide to you a strategy or content brief or a summary of exactly what it's about to do. The user then has an opportunity um, to then approve that brief or make modifications to that brief. Again, very in a, in a very similar relationship to like a consultant where a consultant will tell you what they plan to do or what they recommend for you to do um, of every step in the way before they actually go and do it. Once you know a user approves that uh, brief that the copilot has produced, then copilot will actually go ahead and render an end-to-end -end video encompassing the content, your goals, your audience, everything that you kind of drove it uh, to actually create. And then we view Copilot as presenting that as the first iteration of the video. Um, typically, we see that working with Copilot allows people to get over the fear and the hump of creating from a blank canvas, so to speak, of I know what I kind of want to, want to achieve, but really putting it down on paper or in a video editor is uh, intimidating. And then they kind of move directly from having to create to actually having to iterate, uh, which at least in on enterprise organizations and, and uh, business organizations is viewed as a little bit more efficient as well. So we go from that consultative kind of first draft and iterate type of approach all the way to the other end of the spectrum where AI is really helping you create video from scratch. Uh, how, how, how near is that idea of, of a platform like Sunday Sky uh, being able to help create video from scratch and where are we along on that timeline? Yeah, so it really depends on your definition of video from scratch as well, right? Um, Right, there are kind of two definitions of frameworks for video from scratch currently in the market. The first one is what I would say Copilot does today, where it really is, it creates certain aspects from scratch and then it aggregates other aspects, right? Examples of what it creates from scratch is it will script for you from scratch, um, it will generate voiceover from scratch, uh, et cetera. And then examples where it's looking to aggregate is it's going to aggregate existing video assets, for instance, from stock sources or your existing uh, video asset sources. It's going to aggregate um, or create from scratch music creation um, as a background music, uh, et cetera. And it's also going to aggregate all of your compositions or design compositions into a timeline. When the other definition from scratch is really what we're seeing with um, asset generation from scratch, right? Uh, we obviously had the boom uh, in 2023 around image generation as kind of there. And now, you know, a lot of people are seeing the advancements and waiting with a bated breath of the video uh, advancements. The latest example, I think actually being a Toys R Us advertisement that happened uh, at Cannes last week, which was fully uh, generated from Sora. Uh, based off the feedback of a lot of these kind of big splash uh, generations, we're still a little bit far away from net new video creation from scratch, wholly generated from by, by AI being uh, not so much accepted by organizations, but being accepted by their viewers and even a little bit of uh, uh, pushback. I think really where we're going is that um, and this is the approach that we're actually taking, is allowing users to create uh, 
bite-sized assets via AI, but then still having a human kind of aggregating the more holistic picture of that video in terms of the narrative, which assets appear where and when, and also just as a um, as an eye for quality in terms of what AI is uh, generating to be able to curate and know which kind of uh, assets the, the engine really nailed and which ones maybe we need to see alternative methods to do so. Yeah, now between those two two ends of the spectrum we're talking about, kind of the first draft iteration process and then, uh, you know, this more complete uh, video production process on the other end, uh, uh, we'd also have a chance for the, the third way, right in the middle, where AI starts to learn some of the nuances of our video production process. Uh, 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 what do we see happening there? And is that uh, is that more near term than, than fanciful long term thinking? Yeah. So uh, in terms of kind of more nuanced learning, again, there's typically a couple two answers or two aspects to the answer. And I can talk from a Sunday Sky perspective. So when we think about learnings and improvements, uh, one, there is a general model. Uh, Sunday Sky has its own general model. And this really focuses on general best practices for video in terms of, you know, comparing what the subject matter is to the recommended length of the video, the relationship between voiceover and on-screen text, things like uh, video length and information retention and the density of the content. All of these kind of have more uh, standard evolved guidelines, which a model can improve on in a general sense. Uh, the second level is then account-based learning or brand-based learning, right? Where the idea is that all brands have their own nuances of communication, whether it be the language that they utilize, whether it be the kind of imagery that they utilize, um, even things like length or design compositions, which kind of scream that brand. And ideally, uh, you know, AI would be able to pick on pick up on those. The challenges that we have with that today is a little bit more solvable than generating uh, AI assets from scratch. Right. In terms of it's more about being able to provide localized models and a lot more security in your infrastructure to make sure that that learning based off a brand is then not leaking, for lack of a better term, into someone else's model, into either a general model or into other companies models. Right. Because what we're seeing is a lot more awareness now of hey, everything that I do can be utilized as data for improvements. How do I make sure that my activity is not benefiting my competitor or anybody else, right? So it really is more of a infrastructure uh, capability and then also an assurance of that infrastructure, where, if, uh, for instance, the approach we're taking with our architecture is being able to create localized models which aren't actually connected to a large language modeling, uh, like one of the big five, for instance, that then brands can start to see their models improving uh, on a local level, but then also showcase them the security of that architecture to make sure that they feel secure and assured that their activity and even their data uh, is not being purposed for either general learning or specific industry learning that could benefit their competitors. Yeah. So who do you see as the folks who are best positioned to really put Sunday Sky's capabilities uh, to work uh, for business oriented applications? Who are the ideal customers and prospects for a Sunday Sky platform solution? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So we would uh, identify our ICP um, as two real uh, capabilities or two real uh, profile aspects. One is around uh, belief in video, right? So typically the organization already has a belief in the power of video as a communication tool and driving resonance across you know, all of their initiatives, I would say. And the way that we kind of quantify that belief in video is one, that they've already experimented with video through whatever methodology they either took out work with an agency or they do have in-house video creation capabilities that they're kind of doing and what they're really striving to do uh, is scale it right and when we kind of think about scale yes volume of video of course is one of those right making you know that the amount of videos that they're kind of distributing per month is 
is, is one of those indicators, but also really a broadness of initiatives of what they're trying to do with video, right? We see that video is effective in enhancing onboarding experiences. It's effective in enhancing loyalty experiences. It's effective in enhancing, um, you know, top of funnel marketing, marketing and acquisition. Uh, even things like e-learning, of course, and also internal communications, right? Employee communications, updates, all of that kind of stuff. Our kind of best-in-class users or customers uh, see the value across that entire spectrum and are using the efficiencies and scale capabilities from our platform to make sure that they have videos touching all of those categories. And then the second aspect is that they would aspire to let's call it more advanced video communication. And what I would categorize currently as that is personalization, right? They don't necessarily need to be seeing personalization as the end goal for every single video, but knowing that when you couple video with uh, personalization data to drive more one-to-one -one experiences and how that enhances the overall resonance of a, of a uh, message, then I think, uh, you know, they, they're in a prime position to leverage our platform as much as possible. And then it's the combination of that breadth of initiatives associated with video and then occasionally aspiring to personalization. They really kind of set, you know, our ICP apart. So uh, let's look in the crystal ball a little bit, three to five years down the line and dive more into that uh, idea of video personalization. Uh, what do you think that's going to look like in the, uh, you know, in the intermediate term? And what kind of impact is that going to have on uh, enterprise video adoption, in your opinion? Yeah. So video personalization definitely in the immediate or intermediate term, I think, is still viewed um, not universally, but when it is experienced as an almost guaranteed way to spark delight, right? It sparks delight in a viewer base or a subscriber base. Um, a couple of examples of that are like the persistence of popularity of like the wrapped experiences that we see, right? Spotify, Apple Music, um, even one of our own customers, uh, Dish Network, did something similar, right? And without fail, I typically see that driving resonance across like social media, LinkedIn, et cetera, of, you know, look what this company has done for me as a viewer and the, the delight is there. Um, even Canva is the most recent example. They recently just launched some newer interfaces and utilized their wrapped experience on a global level um, to kind of roll that out. And that also had moments of delight that we were just seeing um, percolate kind of throughout LinkedIn and the social media space there, right? Mm -hmm. So knowing that that is still true, it, it represents a very powerful way for uh, organizations to kind of make sure that they can cut through the noise of digital life and really kind of grab uh, some resonance. So as companies continue to see the success there, um, coupled with the efficiencies that like AI tools and video creation are now bringing, I think we'll start to see, even in the intermediate, a larger exploration of personalized video overall, right? Um, and it kind of coming more and more into the public sphere in terms of sharing those experiences with each other. Uh, the proof, I think, is in the pudding, and the category of personalized video has really exploded over the past two years in terms of companies who have decided to build business models or businesses around it. And as that continues to, to escalate and uh, companies kind of get in front of their data organization, data warehousing, uh, et cetera, then, you know, it will continue to proliferate and be seen throughout the market. Well, it's going to be fun to watch Sunday Sky's uh, progress in this realm of video personalization and uh, certainly a lot of exciting, uh, interesting times ahead uh, in this video content creation space. Uh, Jonathan Benheim, thanks so much for taking the time to visit with us today. I appreciate the opportunity and thank you very much for the uh, interview. And we thank you for taking the time to watch today's episode. If you'd like access to more insight from industry thought leaders like Jonathan Benheim of Sunday Sky, just go to the link right below there. Subscribe to the Intelligent Video Today YouTube channel to get notified of future episodes from the series. For Intelligent Research and Intelligent Video Today, I'm Steve Underhar. Thanks for your time.